Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to another Recall by Data IQ video. My name is Keith Galley and I'm a content creator focused on programming and data science. For the past four years before I switched to YouTube full time, I was working as a founding team member at a conversational AI company called Posh Technologies. In this video, I'll break down my experiences working as a data scientist at a fast paced startup. I'll share what I learned, the challenges, and some of my best recommendations for any of you thinking about venturing into the entrepreneurial space. Should be a lot of fun. So starting off, how did I get involved working in a startup? Well, I went to college at MIT, and after graduating with my bachelor's, I was planning on staying an additional year to do my master's. The summer in between these two degrees, I went and worked as a data analyst at the Florida Panthers NHL ice hockey team. As the upcoming master's semester approached, I realized that I was pretty dang burnt out. I was just not really stoked on going back to school. And so luckily kind of right around that time, a former classmate had reached out to me and asked if I was interested in doing any work with the company he was starting. I knew this classmate as a particularly bright guy, even by MIT standards. Him and his uh, co-founders had previously won Hack MIT, which is kind of globally known as a, a really competitive hackathon. So I saw working with these people as a really great opportunity to grow and develop as an engineer and data scientist. I started off doing a lot of AI and data science consulting uh, with the company. And as kind of we got more and more clients, we saw a recurring theme that these clients wanted some sort of chatbot solution. And a lot of the tools out there to build these types of solutions weren't great. So kind of with this repetitive like inquiries coming to us, we decided to really drill down and focus on building the best products in the conversational AI space. What did my role look like at the startup? Well, with this new focus on chatbot solutions, one of the biggest needs for our product became building strong NLP models that could understand the meaning behind messages sent to our bots. As a data scientist on the team, I took the lead on this research initiative. And so I would say one of the kind of recurring themes that you'll find working at a startup is that a lot of independent work is required. We were a less than 10 person team at the time. So I was really the only one focused on the data science aspect. With this, you kind of have to get really good at finding and being able to learn from a, a wide range of online resources. I was also fortunate in that our CTO was quite a good machine learning engineer. So he was also able to kind of point me in the right direction and give me feedback on what I was trying and what might work, what won't work, etc. I started building models with traditional natural language processing techniques like bags of words, TFIDF, and word vectors a bit, but none of these were able to capture the semantic meaning that we really wanted to, to have a powerful kind of more global model. Luckily around the same time, a bunch of really influential NLP work was being published. So this was all around the kind of onset of the transformer architecture craze. So you had papers like OpenAI GPT being published, you had Google's BERT being published. So what we ended up really pursuing was taking these really powerful pre-trained models and adding you know, ML layers on top of these with the specific goal of building a highly performant model for the task of message intent recognition. And we found it ended up working pretty, pretty dang well. If you're confused by any of the terms that I just mentioned, like bags of words, TFIDF, word vectors, et cetera, I highly recommend checking out the resources that Data IQ has on NLP. I'll link a bunch of them in the description, so definitely check those out. As our startup gained more traction, we needed to hire additional data scientists. When you're working at a startup, you don't have an HR department to organize and lead interviews. Everyone on the team needs to get involved. We started sourcing and interviewing as many candidates as possible. I would say that like one particularly unique challenge about hiring at a startup is you're often interviewing candidates that might be much more experienced and much more senior than you are. Uh, I like particularly remember like interviewing this one candidate and he was a very, very smart guy. And I was, you know, practically like sweating, just like trying to not come off as dumb uh, interviewing this guy and asking him questions. And we basically went back and forth, a very heated uh, interview, both kind of testing the other's knowledge. 
And it, it, it's funny because, you know, as the interviewer, I shouldn't have had nerves, you would think, but very much so when you're trying to hire really top talent, like it, it goes both ways in interviews. Like candidates are nervous because they want to land a job and interviewers often are nervous because they want to land the best candidates possible, especially at a startup. We ended up landing a few very talented hires in the data science department. And my role evolved to walking through my research with them and discussing next steps. Before I knew it, the new team completely took over data science efforts and I switched gears to leading client software implementations. My role evolved to being a software engineering manager as well as becoming the head of customer success. And I think that this is a recurring theme with startups that as you grow, start growing so quickly, you fill the role that the team needs. And in our early stages, that was data science for me. But as we grew, I connected the bridge between our engineers and our clients. I think that this is one of the common themes about working at a startup. Uh, you find yourself forced to wear many different hats. Uh, for me, you know, at the start that involves being a data scientist, but as we grew and as the company progressed, that role evolved, I handed off data science responsibilities and the bigger needs for my position and my experience was being the bridge between our own internal engineers and our clients. All right, that's kind of the bulk of my experience working as a data scientist at a startup. But before I kind of end this video, I did want to walk through some of my more general, like best tips for anyone that's interested in, in getting involved with the startup. The first tip I have is that the stage of a startup is super important to consider. If you join a company pre-series A, so really before they raise a lot of funding, you're gonna be with a very small team. You're probably not gonna have much structure within your role. You might like at one point be a you know, one week be a backend engineer and then the next week be a software engineering manager. You might be a data scientist. You're gonna flex all over the place. And with this, you'll learn a ton of skills and you'll have a ton of impact in your company direction. But at the same time, while you're building all these diverse skill sets, you're not building that depth in a specific domain that you might at a bigger or a more well-funded, uh, more kind of down the road startup. Really at any startup that you work at, things are gonna move quickly, but they're gonna develop and change much more rapidly in that pre-series A phase than they will, let's say series B, series C, you know, anywhere down the road when the team is bigger and, and there's more, I guess, hoops to jump through when decisions are made. The second thing that I really strongly recommend you all consider when thinking about joining a startup is the team and the vision. Joining a startup is a ton of work. Because there are less people, each individual is, is forced to carry more on their shoulders, is forced to do more, and it gets tiring. It, it gets draining. You, people burn out quickly. So if you're thinking about joining a startup, really make sure that you believe in the company vision and you believe in the founding members. Is this startup working on a problem that you care about? Is there a strong need for what the team is building? Are the people on the team individuals that you really get along with and will help you grow and develop your skills? Do they have a track record of success? All of these types of questions are things that you should consider when making that ultimate decision on joining or not. And then finally, the last tip that I have is if you wanna join a startup, make sure to kinda of keep building your skills up. Because you're forced to do so much in a startup environment, having a diverse tool set is, is, is really important. I've mentioned previously that Data IQ has some good resources on natural language processing, but they also have good resources on predictive modeling, time series analytics, and deep learning. I'll leave some additional links in the description. So if you wanna start building up your skills to hopefully you know land that next startup job, check out Data IQ. All right, I think that that's all I have for this video. Uh, hopefully this video was helpful. Hopefully you enjoyed kind of walking through and hearing some of my experiences. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. But until next time, everyone, peace out. Thank you.